this what's the single uh individual event or moment uh that is having the biggest impact in the direction and approach that you have today? In my personal life? Yeah. Oh, great question. Um, I think it's this event that actually happened early on in high school for me. Um, I was actually in the, the marching band in my high school. I played the big bass drum, like the one you wear over your, over mm-hmm. your shoulders. And, you know, back then you're 14 or whatever. And I'd gone off to band camp where we like went to a local university over the summer for a whole week with the band. We marched like... 30 miles during the week just to prep for the season. And coming back home, uh, you know, I actually started to get a lot of pain in the side of my leg. Um, and it was this really weird thing where, like, it started to grow more and more. I was, like, walking around with, like, this leftover cane we had in my house. My parents like, oh, okay, what's the issue with you? And one day I was just, like, so painful. I was like, hey, I think we should go to the doctors. And my parents kind of took me in, and they're like, oh, we think you have sciatica, which is, like, a back nerve pain. But they're like, oh, it's really weird. We've never seen this in someone over 40 Remember, I'm like 14 at this time. So I'm like, uh, okay. They're like, what do I do? And they're like, oh, like, we'll get you into a, a specialist next week. Just kind of, you know, keep it going. And it's two or three days later and I like can't get out of bed. Like I literally like am laying there and like go to the bathroom in my own bed because I can't get up anymore. I'm just like yelling in pain. So my parents picked me back to the hospital. And they're like, yo, this isn't sciatica. <laughs> like <laughs> something, something's kind of funky going on here. And what had basically happened was uh, they took my my blood and my white blood cell count, which normally is like a sign of you know how your body's responding to infections. It's thing called your sed rate. It's normally supposed to be around like 20, 25. Mine's at 140. They're like, wow, we don't know exactly what it is, but you have some type of crazy <laughs> infection. We need to send you to a, a bigger hospital. I'd grown up in a little bit uh, smaller, smaller of a town. Wow. So they rushed me over there. And basically what had happened, I got a, a staph infection. Um, okay. Which is something that's like, you know, relatively uh, r- rare to happen. But they thought I'd basically just like tripped in a parking lot at some point a few weeks before and it just got infected. And what happened had gone to my hip bone. And because the infection had been there for like two or three weeks and they didn't know it, it had like basically eaten away a lot of my hip bone. Um, and, you know, it was kind of just like happening there. So I had to have, I was in the hospital for like 11 days. I had like four emergency surgeries and, um, just this really interesting moment for for a few reasons. One was they they told me at the end that 25 years ago they hadn't invented the technology to actually cure this and actually huh. like filter the the bone out of your blood. <laughs> Just like really crazy thing. 25. To hear. 25 years you ago was died. when they had it. So 25 years earlier that I gotten this, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be around anymore. Um, just like a really 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 wild notion to have. Um, second, uh, I think you're just like sitting there kind of experiencing this and this feeling of such uncertainty. And you know, I was on tons of morphine and meds and all this other stuff. But like, I remember moments of coming in. I remember this one moment that's probably the most formative, you know, impactful experience during that time. Is like, I woke up from one of my surgeries and like my little brother, who is, I guess, 11 at the time, was like sitting there crying. And he's just like, oh, Jordan, like, I hope you don't die. You know, and to like see that as a 14-year-old to like, flirt with death a little bit and just kind of feel that so visually and impact your whole family in and around you. And coming out of that is something that you can never look back on. And I think I kind of made, made it a a promise to myself that moment. That's like, I'm living on borrowed time and I need to recognize every day that I need to be an optimist. I need to go out there and like really try and make the most of my life with the incredible amount of drive and incredible amount of passion and think about you know, using my time in a way that's really impactful for the for the entirety of the world, because there's a very real chance that <laughs> out of randomness, you know, you you don't make it much, much larger than this. So, uh, you know, I still remember like 11th day, I, I wheeled out of the, the hospital in a, in a wheelchair. And it was the first time, it was like, you know, late August, hot sun hits me in the wind. I just started crying. So I was like, hadn't been outside in 11 days. I'm like, ah, oh, like Rocky at the top of the staircase. That I'm is, like, yeah. we did it, you know, we made it, man. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, no, no huge lingering effects anymore. I feel extraordinarily blessed. There's just this moment where you're like, wow, this is, this is really a very interesting life that we all live that can be taken away from you like this, because I just have to treasure it every day and always have a big smile on your face. Wow. (laughs) What an amazing story. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't think it's uh, necessary to comment. Uh, I think uh, I think it's, you already had your medi- enough uh, thinking about all this, and uh... it just it's just one of those things where you, you look back on it, and I think at the time I really didn't understand the the impact that it had on me, um, but it just kind of knocked this sense of 
really being contemplative and trying to reflect on things over yeah. the over the years since and say like, oh, interesting, when you go through these exercises of talking to others, whether it's friends or whether it's a therapist and trying to dive into, you know, what's what's really motivating you. I realize like everyone kind of has their story of baggage yeah. along the way, whether it's an injury they had or, you know, tough relationship with their parents or, you know, a sibling that had passed away. You know, everyone's kind of carrying that stuff with them. And it's just really important to kind of think about that context and in, in interactions with other yeah. people. Yeah, I I, I think um, you wrote a beautiful blog post on this. <laughs> so I'm plugging in the sense ah, that okay, you, you okay. go from... Uh, uh, you, I mean, it's your blog post. You should, you should know how to explain this <laughs> better. But it's Here like, <laughs> you know, you're very, we live in a, a life that is like every day, every day. Or when, when we like, we, we rarely have the, uh, the privilege of stepping back and realizing, okay, let's go back to zero pr- principle thinking and think <laughs> about why we're doing this. What are we exactly doing? And all the all the inner drivers and, and motivators. And you, you finally can stop living paradoxically and actually, you know, think, let it go. Yeah, and there's this concept that uh, Immanuel Kant talks about a lot. It's like the sublime. Um, and he says like, there's kind of this differentiation between beauty and sublime. And sublime is this like one level higher than beauty where it's all consuming. And at the same time, all removing and kind of what, what that concept means. And you, you've probably felt it visually or maybe you have. I feel this when I'm like, I've gone on a hike in the night and you're like maybe on a, on a cliff or in the mountains or on a hill. And you just like look up and you look at space. A lot of times it invokes feelings of this where you're like, wow, I'm realizing I'm just a small being here. And like it's all consuming all around me. But at the same time, it's like all fulfilling in a way too. I'm like, wow, like this is an amazing universe. And I'm like the main character in my story kind of controlling my own conscious pathway through the world and like it's these experiences that like pause time that remove you that take you back that's like beauty and I think it's it's one of the reasons I just love love art so much is because it encourages you to just take this reflective stance it encourages you to just like take a back step back and pause and say like huh interesting like maybe I haven't thought about that but I feel like I believe it to be true even though I've never heard it before (laughs) All these different interesting pieces, but the the contemplative nature of it is just really interesting. Yeah, it throws you off, uh, and then you're forced to, you know, just all of a sudden not behave like you do every single day. Um, I yeah, think I really that- like statement statement pieces for that that reason sometimes, or it's like maybe you have to look at it a few times, maybe you have to read the book a few times if it's a piece of literature, but like. Once you understand the meaning behind it, you can never you can never unsee it anymore. <laughs> it's kind of this yeah, red pill a little yeah. bit. No, I, I love it. I, you know what does that for me a lot? Uh, theater. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Tell me more. Well, it's the moment where you, you, you're you sitting there in theater and you're looking at the at the piece and and all of a sudden you realize that you've been looking at the piece. It's like, mm. oh, what just happened there? <laughs> did I just, you know, was I was I still myself? Where did I just go? Like, wh- where was yeah. I? Uh, and uh, th- so theater is my form where I really have that and I, and I yeah. appreciate in people the ability to do that uh, in, in things that maybe other people see mundane. Yeah, I guess if you think about it, you're literally like stepping out of your own shoes and <laughs> putting yourself yeah. into, into a literal out-of-body experience in a way by uh, being someone else.